quick overview of uh, the Marconi 2031 signal generator, uh, 10 kilohertz, 10 kilohertz yeah, to 2.7 gig. Um, nice base kit to be honest. Uh, picture of one eBay, relatively quite cheap. Good power on. Um, it's a little bit out of calibration by about 20 years, but you know, <laughs> well, you know, it's in the end of the world. I'll do a little bit of work on that. Um, there's your boot up screen. Uh, if we now set this to uh, one gig RF level uh, minus ten dB, shows on the screen and uh, on the spectrum analyzer. Yeah, a little bit of losses, but I'll put that down to cables, I think. Um, Let's just put it down to minus 20. It's quite good. It's quite nice that. Um, seems to be doing the job. Um, main reason for showing this video um, is really the location of the EEPROMs. If you've got any problems with the um, data loss, um, I mean, basically, you've got to take the top off. Which I ain't gonna show you how to do that. I mean, if you can't do that, then don't bother going any further. Uh, there is this steel plate on top, which uh, has got about 50 screws in it. Um, so I'll take those off, and here is your key prompts. So I'll zoom in a little bit on them. Uh, sorry, that's not brilliant. Let's try a bit more light. Oh, just take that off. Hang on a minute. Thank you. Can that see that's any better? No, not really well. I'll put, I'll put what they are anyway at the bottom, so... There you go. There's the location of them, if you need to get to them. Uh, I have seen some reports of people losing the data on, the, uh, on their EEPROMs. Uh, overall, it's quite a nice layout. The board. Uh, I'll give you a quick check over. Not if it's loose. It's just coming in from from eBay from quite a distance. Uh, it didn't travel too well. The uh, the handles that were here got broken. Uh, of course, a little pile of those. But it's not too bad. It survived the trip. Um, it seems to be working okay. I've tested all the other functions on it. Um, against the uh, spectrum. Um, fortunately, this one only goes up to 2.1 gig, but I've got one there that's a little bit old, but it does the job. Um, and I've took it up to the maximum, and it does seem to work okay, and down to the minimum. Um, so it does seem to be working okay. Um, general overview of it, it's quite nice. Um, you go into the utility menus, um, you can set the date and time, as you can see, the date and time on there. Uh, the other one is a main utility, uh, if I go into hardware status, um, gives you a little bit of information there. Um, software status, which matches up with the labels on the EEPROMs. Um, but one of the other things that you need to look at is in menu 2, lock and unlock. Um, both the codes for this is for unlock 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. Which I believe is the default, and unlock level two is one, two, three, four, five, six, um, which these are both set of defaults. So quite lucky there, really. Uh, so if I do need any, do any sort of form of calibration or settings or anything else, I can at least get into it. Um, it's quite a nice piece of kit, really. It's got a low frequency generator on it as well, um, which I've tested that as well. Uh, that works quite well, nice. It's nice that it's got on the scopes, so no problem at all with that. Uh, go back to the signal generator. You've got AM, FM um, modulation if you want it, enable it, disable it. Um, all the settings, there are probably more settings than I'd ever need to be honest. I only do basic repairs and bits and bobs. So, um, I'm just building an SWR meter thing here. Um, so all this bit of equipment comes in quite useful for that, uh, for tuning magnetic loops. 
Um, well, I don't know what I said about it. It's got a nice piece of kit. Really? Uh, I've got the flute down there, which will probably be putting up for sale, um, and replace it with um, this Marcano. Um, can't find any faults with it at the moment. As I say, it didn't travel too well. I've got a little ding on it on there. Um, and I think one of the back feet got a little bit cracked, but the, the guy packed it reasonably, but it weighs 20 kilos nearly. Um, it would have been wise to collect it, but it's sort of like a 400 mile trip to go and collect it. You know, it'd be an 800 miles round trip, and I wasn't going to do that, so I took the gamble. Um, I think I paid 600, well, 580 pounds for it. Um, which, you know, I think quite a bargain really. Um, I've seen some on eBay for in the thousands. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's it. So that's a general overview of the board on the top. Um, the location of the EPROMs, um, nicely put into uh, sockets. So if you do need to take them off uh, for whatever reason, um, obviously to read them, which I probably will do. So I'll have some dumps for somebody if they need them. Um, I haven't done it quite yet, but I will get around to it. Um, but it's quiet, uh, sits on the bench quite nice. Uh, we'll fit in with some of the rest of the test gear, so um, ooh, should be alright. Um, anyway, have fun. Uh, have a play, see if you can get one. Uh, they're coming around quite cheap now. I would imagine these were quite expensive when they first came out. Uh, there are manuals available on the internet for service. Um, and calibration, uh, but this one seems okay at the moment. So, um, I've checked everything through against the uh, cichlids, and this is in calibration, so um, I think everything you know got a bargain there. I think um, it will fit in nicely with the rest of the kit. Um, if you want to know anything else, let us know. Um, same price. <laughs>